Hi, Shalom friends. Do you remember that children's riddle? It goes like this. What's as big as an elephant but weighs nothing? Okay. It's shadow. Now, the reason why I remember this riddle is because recently I went to a farmer's market and we were trying to uh, educate people a little bit about Purim. And someone comes over to me and says, I know what Purim is. I said, oh, that's wonderful. It's, it's the Jewish Halloween. <laughs> and I go, really? He said, yeah, you know, there's a lot of candy and the kids get, 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 get dressed up. So I want to tell you <laughs> that uh, comparing Halloween to Purim based on candy and, and costumes is perhaps similar to looking at a mule pulling a cart that has four wheels made out of uh, wood and compare it to the latest model SUV. <laughs> well, this has four, <laughs> four wheels, this has four wheels, this moves, that moves, come on. I mean, if we just wanted to frivolously waste time, I could point out every possible difference. In fact, there are opposites from a day which celebrates spirits and magic and, 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 and uh, mischief to a day of holiness, to a day of joy, and most of all, a day that reminds us that nothing happens randomly. Miracles happen through, through the, the covering of nature. But it does bring up an interesting question which the sages do talk about, and that is, why is there a Jewish custom to wear a mask or a costume on a Purim? And I want to point out that it's important, uh, even when you wear a costume, the main part of it is really the mask. I mean, if you're wearing a bear costume, but you don't have the head of a bear upon you, or even if you're wearing a, uh, a clown costume, but there's no, there's no makeup with a silly grin on your face, it, it's, a, it's a giveaway. So really, the costume sort of changes the face. So why would we have a holiday of Purim where there is an authentic Jewish tradition for children, and even adults perhaps, to get dressed up and to hide their face? Well, we could go in many different directions. I'm going to focus on one particular lesson. Why do you think people wear costumes? And why do you think people cover their faces? I suppose the most obvious answer would be to hide themselves. So in all of the TV shows, right, the bad guys come into a bank and they have a mask over their, their face, or a bank robber, etc. Or if you want to be somewhere where you don't want people to know that you're there, you'll disguise yourself. So, and of course, if your face is apparent, <laughs> They're going to recognize you whether you're wearing a costume or not. So you do something to disguise or hide your face. So what's the purpose of a mask? To hide, to conceal. Which leads us to a very, very powerful question in my eyes. There's a man of truth. His name is Moses. Moshe MS, the Torah, so MS, Moses is true, and his Torah is true. And he is the first person, as far as I know, biblically speaking, that wore a mask. Uh, you can look at in the book of Exodus, chapter 34, and read uh, verse 33. And I'll tell it to you, for those of you that don't remember the words, Moses comes down from the mountain, uh, his face is radiant, and uh, people are frightened to, to look at him. And essentially, they run away. So Moshe Rabbeinu has to cover his face with a mask so the people are not frightened anymore. And then he's able to teach them Torah. When he actually teaches them, he takes off the mask. Do you think Moshe wanted to hide? No. Clearly, the purpose of the mask was to reveal. <laughs> I can't emphasize this enough. He covered his face not to hide from them, he covered his face in order that they might come closer to him. Because looking at his face uncovered was, was awesome. He was, it was scary. His face radiated divine light. You can't look at the sun. So he covered his face in order that he might be accessible to the people. And once they were there, and once they were settled, and they knew that their teacher, their master, their, their leader 
was with them, then he could take off his mask. I think that is perhaps one of the most important lessons of Purim. You know, the happiest day of the year, the most joyous day of the year, the day where boundaries are sort of overlooked, is Purim, one day of the year. In fact, there is a law that says you should be so happy, deliriously happy. I mean, to an extreme, you won't know the difference between one and another. That's how happy you should be. And this happiest day is preceded by close to a year of tremendous anxiety, stress, and fright. You know the story. Haman throws lots, and he picks a day of the year, the 13th of Adar, for a decree that had never been before and never since repeated. Every man, every woman, every child, that's Jewish, wherever they may be found, whether they're in the capital city, whether they're in the far ends of the empire, should be murdered, killed, annihilated, finished, kaput, no more Jews. And this lasted for close to 11 months. If you ever had a time when a Jewish man, a Jewish woman, and a Jewish child would ask, where is God? That was the time. And you know what the response would have been? He's hiding. He's concealing his face. He seems to be very upset with us. God forbid, maybe he abandoned us. And then suddenly, Mordechai says, God has not abandoned you. What's wrong with you people? He wants you to get closer to him. So a three-day fast is instituted. Jews are told, be proud Jews. If you're going to die, you die as a Jew. But don't hide your Judaism. And, and, and there's a revival. And then what happens after this revival? The tremendous miracle that the, the used-to-be enemy suddenly turns into a friend. Everyone wants to be Jewish. Everyone admires Judaism. And those die-hard anti-Semites who try to harm the Jewish people are completely destroyed. 75,000 people throughout the empire. And in Shushan, some more as well. And now the Jewish people realize, one second, let's, look, let's read back the story. Oh, when that Jewish girl was taken against her will to the palace, it was because she's going to be the queen that the heroine, the courageous one, who will risk her life for her people. And when Mordechai uh, becomes an advisor to the king and he saves the king's life and the king doesn't even acknowledge him, suddenly it's that moment of omission which turns out to be later on when the king is thinking, what did I do wrong as, as a king? Oh, I never rewarded the man that, that saved me. And every single aspect of the story of Purim, which I certainly hope you will read on Chabad.org or, or read it from the original, suddenly it all fits in. It's God who was hiding not to keep a distance. God who was hiding to create closeness, intimacy, and a, and a sense of oneness with his people. Do we wear masks? Well, if we're not a bank robber, why would we want to wear a mask? I'll tell you when you wear a mask. You had a rough time at work, and your lovely wife is waiting for you. You want to come in with a glum face? You want to make her feel bad? You put on the mask. You ring the bell, or you open and say, Hi, honey, I'm home. And you put a big smile. Later on, when you're relaxed, you might share. Coming in with that angry, sullen, glum face will do nothing for you and certainly nothing for your wife. You're visiting someone in the hospital. You're anxious. You're worried. You're sad. Is that what you want to bring into the room? No, you put on a mask. You walk in. Hi, Bob. Oh, you're looking better than yesterday. The doctors are upbeat. Ed, let me talk sports with you. So tell me something. Are you lying? No. You're bringing out what you really want to be. I want to be a positive force in your life. I want to convey 
my affection for you. And that's not going to happen when I bring in my problems. So sometimes you put on a, a mask, not to hide, but to actually bring out who you truly are. Interesting question, which I'm not going to answer for you. When you come to shul, are you wearing a mask? Or when you go to work, are you wearing the mask? Which one is the real you? Huh, good question. When you're studying Torah, is that the real you? Or is it when you're perhaps in a non-kosher location, is that the real you? Which is the mask? You answer it. But Purim is a reminder that we can and should wear a mask. So this Purim, whether you get dressed up like the righteous Mordechai or the beautiful Queen Esther, put on that mask. When we put on that mask of joy, because there's a lot of rough times right now in Israel and the world and America, a lot of confusion. Put on a mask of joy. That's not hiding. That's revealing. I believe. I know. I affirm. I testify. It's going to be good. Hashem is with us. But he's hiding. No. It's for the purpose of us connecting to him. And when we will wear the mask of joy, which is our true essence, and we're all going to look like beautiful queens and righteous advisors <laughs> with, with a long beard, then Hashem will take off his mask as well. And he will reveal himself in all of his glory. The righteous Mashiach will come. The world will be filled with joy. And what a Purim we will have. Shalom.